now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Kitchener South Hespeler. Uh, I'm standing up today to shout out a great organization hard at work in my riding of Kitchener South Hespeler, Women's Crisis Services of Waterloo Region. Their mandate is to support women and children in moving beyond abuse through outreach services, education, and safe shelter. Last Friday, I got a tour of their newest project, Aspen Place. Aspen Place is a residential building, a triplex that the organization was able to buy outright back in May. It will provide transitional housing for up to a year for women and children fleeing abuse. The building was purchased largely through community support, but our local ReStore, Home Hardware, and Activa Homes were especially generous. Aspen Place is meant to feel like a home, not a shelter. And I was so touched and impressed by the dedication of the Crisis Services staff to making that goal a reality. When I was there, I met Fawn and Ashley, who were both absolutely covered in sawdust and paint uh, and hard at work cutting down cabinets to build toy storage. Jen Hutton is the CEO, and we had a great conversation about how financial dependence binds women to abusive partners. I got the chance to share some of the amazing retraining and skills upgrading initiatives developed by our very own Monty McNaughton. Uh, and Jen and I are excited to meet again soon and talk about how our government is continuing to empower women to achieve financial independence through new employment opportunities. Today is the official ribbon cutting for Aspen Place. I can't be there in person, but I'm there in spirit. Great work, ladies, and I appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Member statements. I recognize the member for St. Catharines. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to recognize the 2022 Canada Summer Games in Niagara that officially came to a close Sunday, August 21st. I had the opportunity to witness many visitors, uh, at visitors and victories by impressive athletes from all across Canada. These young individuals showed true sportsmanship and dedication to their sport. It was truly an honour to present winning medals to these athletes at beach volleyball, long jump and rowing events that took place over the past two weeks. A huge congratulations to all 509 athletes from Team Ontario for collecting a total of 198 medals, 86 gold, 60 silver, 52 bronze. You have made all of us very proud and you should be incredibly proud of your personal accomplishments. Going home to your family and friends knowing you served your province and did your best. These wins would not have been possible without the guidance of many coaches, managers, and parents. Thank you for your dedication for uplifting young athletes. Big wins were also celebrated by 12 provinces, territories that participated in the Summer Games. And thank you to the dedicated dedication of 3,000 plus volunteers who really gave a gold medal performance. As Canada Game Torchbearer for St. Catharines, the 2022 Games will forever remain a special memory. We are all very much looking forward forward to watching the 2023 Summer Games in Prince Edward Island next year, with Team Ontario sweeping another big win. Member statements. I recognize the member for Windsor Tecumseh. Sir, uh, one week ago, I had the sincere privilege to represent our government at the national ceremony for the 80th anniversary of the Dieppe Raid hosted in Windsor by Veterans Affairs Canada. It was a tremendous honour to meet three veterans at the ceremony, each of who epitomized courage under fire and sacrificed so much to protect us. Sapper John L. Date was presented with the National Order of the Legion of Honour at the event from Colonel Bruno Elouin of the Government of France, recognizing his service with the 11th Canadian Field Regiment in the Dieppe Raid. Also recognized for their service to Canada were Arthur Boone of Perth Middlesex, who served with the Canadian forces on the beaches of Normandy, France on D-Day, and Charles Davis of Windsor, Tecumseh, a proud veteran of the Normandy campaign who landed on Juneau Beach on D-Day plus four. It was a sincere honor to meet, have dinner, and speak with Mr. Date, Mr. Boone, and Mr. Davis last week. And I want to thank them tremendously for their service to us I'd like to take this opportunity to, as well, to congratulate Mr. Davis in advance for his upcoming 100th birthday on September 27th. Uh, 
A special thanks to Veterans Affairs Canada for delivering a national ceremony in Windsor that demonstrated a tremendous dignity and respect for the sacrifice of our veterans. Thank you. Member statements. Member statements. I recognize the member for Davenport. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I just want to talk for a moment this morning. I'm looking forward to speaking a bit about our health care system because we in Ontario, we cherish our public health care system. And the right to health care for everyone, regardless of income or where they live, is part of our identity as Canadians. So it's no surprise that Ontarians are reacting to this government's recent attack on public health care and seniors' care with growing fear and anxiety. And I want to take the few moments that I have here this morning uh, to speak to uh, of something very specific, which is this government's decision to table a time allocation motion to, uh, on their government bill, G7, on, on, uh, on long-term care. This is the bill that would deny uh, seniors and their families the right to consent to where they want to be sent for long-term care. And I, I wanted to, to raise that because the government's tabled a time allocation motion that would uh, prevent uh, committee hearings, uh, prevent this bill from going to committee, which means that the people of this province who care about these issues, which are most Ontarians, will not have an opportunity to speak, to present, and to, frankly, um, outline their concerns or uh, arguments uh, around this legislation. I think it's really unfortunate. Um, I, I think that um, we need to do better here in this place. This government was elected with a majority. They can do whatever they want pretty much at this point. I encourage them, please, to provide an opportunity for people to speak to this bill, for experts to come and express their concerns, uh, and maybe we can actually create some good legislation in this place. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements? Over here. Elgin, Middlesex, London. Speaker, next week marks the beginning of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Every September, we are given the opportunity to remember those who have lost their lives to childhood cancer and honour more than 10,000 children who are currently getting treatment while fighting this ongoing battle. Approximately one in five children will not survive their battle with cancer. Dave and Maureen Jenkins, daughter Maggie Jenkins, was a bright and loving girl from my riding who tragically lost her life on March 14, 2014, after complications from an aggressive cell cancer that had previously gone undiagnosed, sadly, she was only 12 years old. The fight of childhood cancer survivors never ends. Approximately 95% of survivors live with chronic health problems for the remainder of their lives. Speaker, childhood cancer is the number one cause of death by disease of Canadian children. The Jenkins family is pleased to provide every member of this legislature a gold ribbon lapel pin through the Maggie Project in memory of those who have fought and continue to fight childhood cancer. I would like to encourage all members of this legislature to reflect upon this reality over the coming month and encourage all Ontarians to continue our hard work towards ending childhood cancer. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. My constituents in Nickel Belt continue to wait for this government to follow through on their commitment to provide affordable childcare spices. Parents like Janelle from Chelmsford in my riding. Janelle has had her child on a registry since April of last year. That's 16 months ago, but she has yet to find a childcare spot. This young woman traveled and is willing and has applied to 10 different child care centers, yet she's still empty-handed. Empty -handed. Her maternity leave ends in September. She wants to go back to work, but she cannot do that without child care for her baby. KG is a, lives in Hanmer, uh, is a registered nurse. She has two young children on multiple wait lists. She would accept driving to two different daycare twice a day, every day, so that she can get back to caring for a patient as a nurse. Her maternity leave is done. She wants to get back to work. She is very much needed as a nurse, but she cannot go back to work until she can find childcare for both of her children. Yesterday, the government stated, every job that sits unfilled hurts Ontario economy. I agree, Speaker. 
But those are just two of the thousands of professional jobs across our province that are unfilled because this government won't follow through on the commitment to deliver childcare to the working parents of Ontario. Talk about an easy solution that would help our health care system tremendously. Thank you. The member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. This past Friday, I joined the Honourable Member for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes with members of the Rural Alcohol Syndrome Disorder Network, Fe Fetal Alcohol Syndrome Network, sorry, uh, FASD, at Southport Park to hear more about the impact that a $500,000 Youth Opportunities Fund grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation will have. The four-year-long grant was awarded in 22 and is designed to help the organization and its organizational mentor group open doors for Lanark children and youth to expand on their work with individuals with FASD and their caregivers. Individuals diagnosed with FASD experience unique and complex challenges in all stages of life. This investment will go a long way to provide the appropriate support for individuals with FASD and their caregivers. In addition to improved access to programs and training, the Rural FASD Support Network will be able to expand upon its peer-facilitated support and fellowship and provide additional forms for people with FASD to share their voice and lived experiences. The network connects with the individuals with FASD and their caregivers from across Ontario with local FASD informed service providers and provides evidence-based research training. And thanks to the grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, people with FASD will be able to access those needed supports to achieve their full life potential. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Orléans. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's an honour to uh, stand and speak today about an important event that happens in Ottawa's East End. Uh, DAPO Day, held the third Saturday in August, and this past Saturday uh, was its 20th anniversary. Twenty years ago, the Agoro family lost their son and brother, Adapo, Dapo Agoro, to senseless knife violence. The Dapo Agoro Foundation for Peace was born out of the loss, and the Agoro family wanted to not only honour their son and brother, Dapo, but to be a catalyst for change. As humans, we all face trauma, adversity and stress on a daily basis, and the ability to recognize and recover is a, is a tool that we all need, both as individuals but also as a community. The Dapo Agoro Foundation is a non-profit organization that promotes non-violent conflict resolution. This year's anniversary fe featured a virtual panel discussion around the, the road to resilience. The panel explored the definition of all that resilience means, including what it means when someone can be too resilient, and shared personal examples of this resilience. The, the attendees left with new insights and connections within Ottawa for help and learning. Sadly, it's a daily occurrence to read in the news of young men and women being hurt and killed by violence, Mr. Speaker. Never, nevertheless, this foundation continues to honour Dapo Ogoro's memory by exploring how to build a healthier, stronger community to support our youth and help them navigate their lives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Markham Thornhill. To rise in December, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the residents of Markham Thornhill the most ethnically diverse riding in Canada for putting their faith and trust in me and re-electing me for the second term. I want to thank all the re-elected and newly elected colleagues in the House. Mr. Speaker, I would like to especially thank our Premier for his strong leadership in Ontario. My success wouldn't have been possible without my wonderful campaign team. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my volunteers, my family, my core team. Mr. Speaker, when I escaped from fear of persecution, I came to Canada as a refugee. I had nothing. I lost almost everything except for my hopes and dreams to live in this wonderful province to have a peace and harmony. And here I am, an elected representative in the Legislative Assembly of Ontario, symbol of democracy. I never thought that one day I'll be become an MPP and the parliamentary assistant. Mr. Speaker, thank my parents for giving me the values, principles, and courage to become who I am today. 
I regret that they are not here, but they are looking at from above. Mr. Speaker, as the Ontarians reopen, we have now started to re-engage with our community. I was happy to attend the 25th anniversary of Vedi Cultural Centre in my riding. I would like to congratulate President Yar Kabuji and his team. Mr. Speaker, in this 43rd Parliament, my goal is to drive on forward and get it done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, member statements. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Trias College on celebrating their 30th anniversary this summer. Trias began and are still headquartered in my riding of Mississauga Streetsville. They began 30 years ago by offering network operating systems training to computer resellers and corporations. In the 90s, they expanded into career training of unemployed adults, acquired a five chain career colleges, and became Trias College of Information Technology. After the dot-com meltdown of 2001, they pivoted from IT to offering business, healthcare, law, and supply chain programs. They've since expanded to eight campuses in Ontario, plus four more locations in the Maritimes as Eastern College. In the past two years, they've launched an online college and partnered with So College and Mohawk College as their GTA training partner. Trias College employs over 700 staff and faculty, train over 5,000 students daily, and has graduated over 60,000 adults into meaningful jobs, including thousands, yes, thousands of PSWs. Trios has recognized as one of Canada's best managed companies for the past 12 years. Please recognize their co-founder and CEO, Frank Garenza, together with his team, John Cruikshank and Massimo Noce in the members gallery today. Welcome. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.